A very good morning to you on this Tuesday morning. Today we are going to be doing bead crocheting and I just I love it. I really do love this technique. So we're gonna start. We're gonna I'm gonna show you how easy it is to put add your beads on there. And I've deliberately didn't turn them into these bracelets yet because I want to show you how to join the two together. But let's just stop and acknowledge this weather <laughs> it's just like blowing a gale out there i cannot believe it that um it's so so windy like really really windy how's the weather where you are do let me know do let me know in the comments if this is throughout the uk or this is just here um do you have the window open actually maybe i should shut the window if you can hear the wind too much but um yeah so that's 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 the weather here let me know how's the weather where you are um it really really windy outside so definitely the perfect day to stay in and do some beading site so we had some different color ones before which i'm just going to show you just in a sec they those ones are in the category as well i made so many of these i enjoyed them so so much now with these bracelets they obviously we are making them elastic bracelets they're really easy to put on and to take off but you can make them smaller and you can use them as um, you can use them in hair as well so you could do all sorts of different things with it I, I love it i really do love it when we cross over to different techniques like crocheting and beading you can get really great results right how are we doing today good morning everybody i'm gonna pop you right down onto the mat and then i'm gonna show you the um going to show you all the samples the two new colorways i added this week so i wanted to do something more spring summery color i guess um, something more like I'm thinking if I am if I'm going to concentrate on more on summer colors I'm hoping the summer is going to come um, quicker and quicker and what's this one doing here we don't need to see the outside is it's very windy there so I did a couple of colors and um, this one is a, more like a soft teal dark turquoise with pinks in there Come on, camera. I want you to focus on me. Don't focus on that in the background. Let's take you off. And then I made another one up, which is purples with more teary colors. I really do love it. So this one I added onto the brown elastic and this one I added it onto the light elastic. So both of them are really nice and summer color. Um, I got quite a lot of tops with pinks in there and... Um, that would be love to wear it with and again more of maybe like an evening wear a little bit darker but you can wear it with turquoises and purples as well right so the ones we had before and actually i'm very quickly going to pop onto the website and show you there we go where are we there we go there we go so you know the drill home page oh no we don't need all these windows in there so you know the drill home page categories video tutorials there is today's is bead crocheted one now we had had some of these packs on before we we used to have them in on with two strands but we reduced them one strand of each one of the colors because that will make your bracelet and give you a little bit of extra if you do want to buy a second pack in the same color then you will be able to make like three bracelets well depending on size um i like my one quite big as well but don't forget they are elastic so even if you make them a little bit smaller they will work perfectly so today one is we got butterfly and dragonfly this must have been leanne who named these color wise and definitely that's her her doing it's leanne's doing so butterfly is the pink and uh sort of a dark aqua and dragonfly is your teals and purples and these are the ones we had there on before we had an autumn colorway we had reds we had teal we had greens um the black is showing no stock um Simon, can you sort that? Because I know we have got stock of that one. So they need to sort it out on the website. Some Or somebody might have been very quick this morning and bought all the samples up. So 
Um, Lucy, would you mind just put in the group chat or text Simon about uh, um, Elastic, please? Right, so how do you get started? And first of all, you have to add your beads on that. Your beads comes on strands just like this. And then we need to add all the all the beads onto our... So let me just give me one sec. I need to slightly just give me one sec. Is the camera so far away? There we go. Sorry about this. That's better. I just need to be sort of closer to me. Otherwise, I'm going to be bringing the projects to Mormi and I'm going to be constantly going out of frame. So you have to add all your crystals in order on your strand. And when you when I say it in order, there's a little knot on there and there. When I say it in order, you need to, need to pile them up into piles. And you're going to go one, two, three, four, five. And you're going to, ha you're going to go through the piles over and over again to zoom out a bit so one two three four five and you're going to pick them up over and over again in the same the same pattern because this is what keeps you straight this is what makes you um have the right um right amounts when you're going around and it's really, really crucial because as you're going round and round in your in your crocheting, you are going to have um, you 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 will know which color to pick up. And if you go wrong somewhere, then you know you've gone wrong and you didn't pick up one of the the um, you didn't go through one of the beads properly. So it's really crucial to have the right amount of beads in there. So I do always double check myself as I'm pulling them down on my strand. Okay, so to get them onto your strand, so you're the, the, the end of the elastic, and I'm going to zoom in on this a bit. And to get it onto your elastic, you can see the end of the elastic can fray a little bit. You can't just put your crystals on there because they're not going to go on there that easily. So what we need to do, we need to use a big eye needle. But furthermore, to use a big eye needle, so if I just added the big eye needle onto my elastic just like that, it's still not going to work. <laughs> not going to make life easier. And let me just try to push this through. So I just added that on there. And you can see that this is not going to work because, can you see at the bottom here, this is quite thick and if I'm trying to pull it through, what we're trying to do with the needle is pulling twice the amount, twice the um, width of the elastic into our bead and our bead hasn't got that large hole. So what we really need to do is, I'm going to take this off, we need to make this end part thinner and to make the end part thinner, we are going to kind of cut the middle part out of it. So I just trimmed the end and as you can see, I'm hoping you can see, if you look at it from right above, you do have an outer um, woven elastic on this and then, then you have an inner core. And if I tap on the top, there's a couple of ways you can sort of kind of open up the end a little bit. So I'm just tapping on the top, making it a little bit frilly. Then I'm going to take my, I can't see my chain nose pliers anywhere, so put it, no, I had them here just earlier, never mind, we're going to use this one, so I'm going to just grab, I'm going to open up the end a little bit more, and I'm going to try to grab the inner elastic there with my pliers, that inner bit. Right, trim this off a little bit. Right, if if you can't find the end easily just like that, then I'm gonna cut this almost along the top of it. Can you see that I'm not cutting it straight, I'm cutting it more on an angle. And when I pull this through, and I pull this through, come on. Mm. 
when I pull this through you should see the end there I did it so many times when you have to do it on live it's never never works <laughs> it's never works when you have to do it in live right let me get my better scissors because those scissors are not very sharp so don't really cut very well so I'm just going to go along the top of that I just want to cut the top part of that cotton a little bit to open this up just very gently I don't want to cut the whole strand you might have to play with it a little bit there we go we can see it now so can you see the end came through the, the from the middle that little elastic bit and now we're going to hold on to this end bit can you see that we're going to hold on to this end bit and very gently we're going to stop pulling the rest of them back and can you see as we're pulling it up we get more and more of the middle bit so just going to be pulling just holding it always a little bit further down once you have something to grip onto you can put your pliers down and just pull this outer cover for your elastic back and back and back and we don't probably only want to do like probably about an inch or so and i'm just pulled that off and then i'm going to pull the outer edge back towards the other side and can you see we have created an end where our elastic is much thinner than that the inner core is inside it so now if i add it onto my big eye needle then can we very easily we can pick up the beads and transfer them onto our elastic so i'm only nipping the end of it so maybe just a half an inch or so but you can see now when I pull them side by side they're much much thinner than what they were before so now if I take my bead I can just bring it right down let me, I usually pick them up I go along let me just zoom out a little bit so you can see it I go along and I pick all of these bits up all of different colors like my pattern onto my needle let it go all the way down and then I one by one I just pull them down and like how easy is that to pull them through just like that and then we have got our pattern so that's how you can cheat now you, the, the same method works for not so much for rat tails certain types of rat tails but works for wax cotton cord because that has got like an inner core inside it and an outer woven um thread on the top of it works for loads of different um cords just to take out that little bit of an inner cord makes your make makes it smaller and it's so easy then to add things on the top of it so that was our little troubleshooting how to add the beads on Oh, by the way, that was the autumn colorway um, on the website. <laughs> I love crocheting with beads, so I wanted to get into it so quickly. Um, this is the butterfly. This is the peacock. That's the autumn colorway. This is the teal, and that's the green, and that's the red. We did this for Christmas. But you could make your own colorways up, like, you know, whatever you want to. I think I used... Now they, they are still rondos. I made a monochrome one from different rondos. They're all three by four millimeter in size. Right. Okay, so how to start crocheting with it. You do have to excuse my hands because I do crochet the European way, but I'm really hoping that uh, you're going to be able to pick it up and we be able to do it with me. So I first you need to make a slip knot and that's really easy. You just cross your tail over and then you pull you pull your elastic through. I'm going to insert the crochet hook into this loop and I'm going to zoom in so you can read it really, really close up. Now the 
good thing about the elastic that it has got because it has got like an inner core and the outer core when you crocheting with it they kind of the elastic bites into its own self so it, it doesn't unreal very very easily how to determine the size for your wrist so i usually do it by eye like i keep going and i just bring it around and that's probably a little bit too big for me but i do like my bracelet loose i don't like them uh, tight on my wrist so i always do an extra just under half an inch because i'm going to join the end and the beginning together so it's going to look like there is no end or no beginning to a bracelet i mean look at this one if even if i tried i can't find where is the beginning and where is the end on this like, I don't know. I, I couldn't. I couldn't find it because that's how good you can weave it together, right? So starting the stitch, I'm gonna need more. Yeah. So I'm gonna take down some of these crystals, just pushing them down on my strand to giving me more room at the top. And I, I just like I have them all on. Where is it? So I have them all on my elastic. Um, I just use the whole spool and have all the beads on there. Pick them all of them up and I just keep going and doing my bracelets. Right, just quickly pulling them down. So I'm pulling them towards the spool. And I'm just going to leave a few at the end to work with. So I'm going to wrap this end around my index finger. That's how I hold it. Just zoom out just a tiny bit. That's how I hold it myself. Because with this one, I can cons I can control the, the tightness, I guess, of the how i'm crocheting and my beads are not going to run away because they are like they're still there with my this is my left hand with my right hand i will hold the crochet hook and in my right hand i will hold the bottom of my crocheting right like at the moment i'm just grabbing onto this tail but once we get going we like when you got like an inch or so you got something to hold on to and that's will be holding it on my left hand so my left hand is pretty much holding everything the strand what is going down to my work the the end of the work i'm producing which is coming out on the bottom side and then the crochet hook my right hand is free to move the crochet hook around so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna crochet my first bead so normal crocheting you would just like without a bead you would pull your end through when you're crocheting with bead you're going to pull a bead down and every single time we crochet we're going to pull a bead down so i'm going to pull it down right to that knot i'm going to hold on to this bead and then i'm going to take my crochet hook and pull the strand through just above that bead now i'm going to repeat this again this is just a chain stitch and then we adding a crystal in between and as you can see as i need more i can just unreal it on my finger and then i can still control to giving it a nice and tight tension so i'm just going to go ahead i'm going to repeat this you need it five chain stitch because you're using five colors and as you can see it's already curling at the bottom i love it and then I'm just doing the last one here. So I got my five chain stitch here. And now what we need to do is just pull this out a bit. What we need to do is to turn this into a circle and start our crocheting in the round. So we'll have our bracelet forming. So I like to have this sort of on the outer, the, the beads facing on the outer edge. Again, gonna suspend it on my finger, just like that. And it doesn't really matter, like if you're crocheting one way or another, I like to go clockwise because that's that's how So 
So I've got my beads all the way around. I'm going to go and go under the bead, that very, very first bead. Come on, camera. On the very, very first bead. Now, a crucial thing to do here is you need to, as I hooked under this bead, and I'm going to come in, zoom in, so you can really see it um, very, um, very close so as i went under this bead i'm going to take this bead and take it over and down behind my crochet hook then i'm going to bring this one down here and hook my crochet hook onto the elastic and bring it through both of those loops one oops one and two. Then I'm going to tur slightly turn it and go into the next one, which is this lovely teal color. Again, I'm going to make sure I'm bringing it up and over my crochet hook. I'm going to bring down the next color just here, making tucking it right in the corner there. And again, I'm going to bring both, we're going to bring hook it through both of those loops going into the next one and you get uh, probably by now you can guess I know which loop I need to go to because the next bead on here is going to be the same bead same color bead and again who can get through I'm going into the light pink so even if I was a little bit lost I know my next bead is the light pink so I know I need to go into the light pink because when you start, I guess the first couple of rounds can be a little bit tricky until it gets its shape. Hold on, let make sure this is up and over, just like that. And then I'm bringing that pink down and going to pull both of, going to pull this. Hold on, I think. Just step back one. There we go. I went through an extra knot there. I'm pulling it through. And there, finally, I'm going through this lovely baby pink and pulling it through. And now I'm back to the very first one. So I'm going to go through this one, pulling it over, bringing the next bead down. Again, it's the same color because we made sure when we picked up the patterns. So I know I'm doing right and going around and round and round. And we're not going to stop until we get the desired length of our bracelet. Right. I'm going to very, very quickly shut that window because I don't know if you can hear the window outside, but it's so, so windy. There we go. I'm very quickly going to shut and I'm going to do a little bit more of this and explain a little bit more how they are sitting on the top. For some reason, I'm just going to double check my, it looks like my autofocus is off of my camera. So what I'm going to do very quickly, I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you. And I know, Michelle, you got a question there as well. I'm going to do the best thing I can do is switch it on and off. It always works every single time. So hopefully it will be all right now. We see. So how do you know how many beads to put on? Michelle is asking. So I usually just add the whole strand on there. So I made the whole bracelet and I probably got enough left for a hair bubble. Or if I had two strands of each color, then it would be enough for three bracelets for me. Now, I do have quite a large wrist. You do know me. So um, for you, probably, if it's Sarah's size or Natalie's size, it would be so much smaller. Um, Ruth can say she can hear the wind here. 
Oh, yes, it is so, so windy, windy outside. Right, okay, so I'm going to do a couple more rounds of this just to show you how to, like, keep on going because this is the, um, the very, there we go. I think it's behaving. I think it's focusing better, isn't it? So I'm just going to bring a few more crystals down. Again, I'm going to wrap this around my index finger on my left hand side. Bring these crystals down and we're going to keep going. So I know I need to go into the pink because the pink is the next one on my strand. So I'm going to go under the pink, make sure that goes up and over, then pull this one down and pull this hook my crochet hook on there and pull it through and again I'm, I'm going into the next color now you don't have to physically push it over with your finger because like doing just like a little movement like when you're going under and pulling it away from your work pulling it up it will that crystal just automatically will sort of hook over and um and go over the top and sit where it needs to sit so again if, you, if you're pulling on the wrong side, of course, it's going to go the wrong way. So you need to make sure that you are pulling it the side which is towards you. And then I'm just going to pull that down and do and hook it over again. Now, as you can see, I'm just going to do a couple more stitches. When you're going round and round and round, there is certain crystals will sit a certain way. So the top crystals, they don't sit the same way as the crystals right underneath it, which is normal. And that's how it should look because your crystal is only going to sit the right way once you went a second row or a, like, you know, another row on the top of it, because this is the movement of what we're doing here, that we are hooking it, sending that crystal up and over our crochet hook that's what is it going to put it the right way so at the moment if I turn it this way you can see that the crystal this crystal underneath is sitting that way but the crystal on the top is sitting so one of them is sitting horizontally and the other one in this one is sitting vertically the way how you look at it now so when we, when we crochet 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 that's when when we send this up and over our crochet hook that's when our horizontal turns into a vertical and then they sit nicely and neatly on top of each other and the beauty of doing five different colors and this is why i say it's easier to crochet with five different colors than one color because you know you're not going to miss a stitch you know you're not going to miss a bead because the bead which is next on your strand is the bead what you need to hook into so i find it um, easier to crochet with five colors especially if you're watching tv in the same time and doing something else that's just there to give you that little reassurance that you're doing the right thing i love it i really do love crocheting with beads and then once you get here that your beads all the way to your crochet hook then you, you just need to go ahead and pull it pull them down a little bit more to give yourself and all I'm doing and I'm just taking my taking my beads and I'm just pushing them down towards my spool there and that's 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 all you need to do and then you get to the top and you got a nice gap to be able to crochet it again so that's it that's how any questions have you got any questions on the crocheting do you want me to show it anything again the hook is 0. no no sorry sorry 1.75 millimeter so it's quite a smallish hook you don't really want to do a larger hook I think actually I have got I have got a four millimeter here and I can show you that it's nicer to work with a smaller hook like that because if I got a larger hook like this, which is a four millimeter, it's still doable with it. It's not a problem, but you're going to have much harder 
to push it the because of the elastic the nature of the elastic it expands you can do it with a larger hook but you're going to have much more force to push it over and under the bead and then pull your next bead through so if, on my opinion is better to work with a smaller one and when you're working with a larger crochet hook the other problem what you can have that the loop is slips over the bead i'm going to put the other one back in here and just pull it tighter and then your stitch kind of goes outside of your crocheting so you don't want that either so it's better to work with a smaller crochet hook if it's too small obviously the Elastic itself will slip on the end, but um, it's really re reverting to to get us a little bit smaller one because I'm not like when you're working with normal crocheting and you're working with like chunky yarns, you need to match your crochet hook towards the size of the yarn. But here we're really trying to match our crochet hook to the elastic strand. Um, do you only use elastic to make this? And he's asking, no, you can uh, you can use anything to crochet it. So um, you could have like a stranded cotton or you can have, you, you know, something like a, a thinner cord. You can add beads and you can even crochet with rat tail, a thinner rat tail, anything, micro cord, loads of different things you can crochet with. I love the elastic because like if I'm doing it with a cord then of course I'm going to have to add an end on it and I'm going to have to add a clasp on it and like you know it's a little bit more of a make when I'm doing it with this elastic what's going to happen is we're going to turn this into a circle and then there's no end no beginning to it and it's just a really easy really easy bracelet to wear and really easy to take it on and put it off no Put, take it off and put it on. I'm mad all the about. Could you use slightly larger crystals in the center to make a bangle with a center point? So, as you can see, because you're crocheting around in rounds, and let me show you on this ones because they're more straighter, the crystals are always sitting sort of slanted on top of each other. So, if you had a larger crystal going around, that would be going round and round and round and round. Of course, you can work out that maybe having these four crystals all the way along but that would be a different pattern but you make the pattern when you adding the beads onto your cord as well so you could have um larger crystals on the outside but you would have to make a different pattern start with something like this something easy and then you can progress into all sorts of different patterns um, Lisa is saying this is the one stitch I have tried and tried but really can't get the hang of it. I will give it a try now. You have shown a great demo. Oh, bless you, Lisa. Let me know what was the problem with it. Why did it need want to work for you? Do let me know. Right, so if there's no more questions on the crocheting, then I'm going to go on to the next part and show you how to join the beginning and end together. So, which one shall we do? Shall we do on the lighter one or shall we do the darker one? The darker one maybe shows up better. And I'm going to zoom in again. Is it showing up better? Why is that camera? Let me just give me one sec. I'm going to look at that camera because there is some reason it's not autofocusing. Oh. Camera troubleshooting on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> Always funny. <laughs> so, what size crystal? The crystals are two, uh, three by four millimeter. You can do them with smaller ones or larger ones if you like. But um, auto focus. that one right. I don't know what's wrong with this right I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it because I probably pressed the button and I can't I can't go back to where I was <laughs> never mind okay so I'm just I'm trying to keep it down so we'll fo if it focuses here 
it doesn't really focus us up here so I would try to keep it down I don't know what is it doing right so to put the end and the beginning together when you look at your ends like they're not sitting the crystals are not sitting the right way so all of these other crystals are sitting nicely on top of one each other and the last one is not they they sitting there so if i'm look at these ones are vertical these are all sitting horizontal here so when we join the end and the beginning up we will be turning these crystals the right way as well so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to add Oh, by the way, after your last hook, when you finished your last hook, you just need to pull the elastic through this last loop. You don't go through any more beads. You just pull it, pull the elastic through that last hoop. And then you have got just a tiny little knot on the end there, holding your stitching together. So it's not going to unreal anymore. Okay, so I am need to sew the end and the beginning together. I'm going to add my big eye needle back onto just here at the end and then i'm gonna bring this together so as you can see we got a pattern here at the beginning and at the end as well that um how we need to add them together and which crystal needs to be on top of which crystal and actually we're missing a bead there we've got an extra bead there so one, two, three, one, two. Yeah, we're going to need to add an extra one. So once you stop your bead work, like I like to stop, like if I fit, if I started with the lightest bead, then I li like to stop with the darkest bead. So you got one of each, but I got an extra one of those, <laughs> those ones on there. But never mind, it could happen to you as well. So I will show you how to add these. You can add an extra bead just in there to cover up those tracks so twist and turn your elastic bracelet so the ends meet up and just have a look if you do need to add an extra bead in or you can just hook them together so in this case because i got an extra one of that turquoise on there can you see when i put them together there is a gap underneath um for this color and which just shows me that i have to add one in there if i didn't have that turquoise one on there then they would just sit on top of each other actually probably that will be easier if i just go back and take it off rather than trying to show you adding one in so i'm just going to undo this knot just pull it back out and i'm going to take off the extra bead i have got on there so it will be the right amount to work with so i did finish this about 11 o'clock the other night <laughs> so, you do, yeah. so an extra bead is not too bad if i just got one extra bead on there right there we go so just pulling it back through now i need to make sure i'm only pulling i'm pulling it back gently and i'm going to take that one bead off right That's not the right end. I'm gonna have to take it off here. Because that, that was my beginning. So I'm gonna take it off from this side. Make sure you take it off the right side. There we go. What's going on here? Oh, I got another knot on the top. Tuesdays. Tuesday, try, trying Tuesdays here again. So hang on one second. Let me just pull this closer. And. Oh, 
So in this instance for me, it would have been easier to add the beads in than trying to take one off. There we go. And there we go. One, two, three. Right, I'm going to insert my hook in there or my needle in there to catch that end so it doesn't go through. Just like that and then I can pull that bead off. There we go. So now I can actually show you how to finish off the end. So when you have your last loop, just pull this, pull your hook into a little bit bigger and then just hook and then pull your working end off. And when you pull that nice and tight, it just forms a little knot. Right. Okay. So we are good to go now. I'm going to put this back onto my big eye needle because it just makes it easier to do it with a big eye needle rather than do it with a crochet hook itself. You can join the ends with the crochet hook, but it's easier to do it with a big eye needle. So I'm just adding the end on there. Just add a bit more. There we go. Now I'm going to line the end and the beginning together. So now they line up perfectly. I haven't got the extra bead on there. So as I'm coming out, um, just behind this very dark purple color, I'm going to go and I'm going to hook my needle in and go through that very dark color on the other side, just like that, and pull this up. And then that, that will join those two together. Now I'm going to go in and now I'm, I'm going to travel this way. So I'm going to go through the light purple color on this side. So I went from this side, jumped to there. Now I'm jumping back. And each color as we're going, we're going to be jumping backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, all the way to join these ends together. Pulling it that tight. Can you see? Now from there, I'm going to jump onto this side and go through that just under that lighter color bead. Pulling this through. And keep on traveling down. Now, this is the one which is still sort of sit these beads on this side, which is they're still sitting the wrong way. So that's why you need to make sure you're catching them on this end of the crystal. And when you pull them, they will just go and sit the right way afterwards. Just like that. Can you see how that changed direction? I'm drawing that up with this one. And I'm going to turn the whole thing a little bit so I can have, see the open end always facing towards me. Just sort of twirl in my hand to open it up. And now I'm coming out of that crystal, so I need to go into the next one. So I'm from one side to the other, I'm just pulling them together one by one. And once you get all the way around, once you get all the way around, then you're going to go ahead and knot your beginning and end together. And you can pull that knot into the middle of your crocheting there. So now I just need to go into this one. And that you can always need to link up the last one with the first one. So after like I, I linked these two rainbow colors together, I'm going to go back into my very dark purple where I, where I started because I started on this side. So I need to finish there as well. So I'm just going to go through and hook into that last purple bead. And I went all the way around. 
and then I have got a continuous beading there and all is left to do I'm gonna go ahead and I can see my tail end I left it on the other side so I'm just going to hook through my crochet right into the middle of my weave, just like that. Find where my tail end is exiting. Hook it around my crochet hook and pull it, pull it all the way through the other side where I want to knot my ends together, just like that. So now they side by side almost. Just going to go under this. I'm going to go under that little bit of elastic in there just to turn under the end up in the right next to buy my tail end. Take this off my needle. And then I'm just going to knot the end and beginning together. With a left over right, right over left knot. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of nail varnish or a little bit of glue on the end just to protect it. But you should be fine. And then I will do the same thing what I just did, pulling the ends through. So I'm coming in from the other side. Just like that. Finding where my knot is. And pulling the ends through. to the other side so that's one and then pulling the other one in through as well it doesn't matter where you really pull it it's just as long as you pull it through so now if I pull on this end that knot will be disappear inside my crocheting there and I can just go ahead and snip these ends and we got an endless bracelet now if you do miss a bead when you put it together so when you when we were going from one side to another this one this one's got the right amount of beads on there but if you do like end up like missing a bead because you finished on the wrong bead you know when you jump from one side to another and backwards and forwards you just need to pick that bead up what you're missing and then you're hooking back to the other side but that's it that's how easy it is to add your ends together and you could do all sorts of different colors but whatever color you like Move that up there. Just come out. So we got the new colorway, which is this is the butterfly. We got peacock. They they the two brand new ones. Sometimes like and we were sitting there with Gabby for <laughs> probably about forty five minutes, putting colors in, taking colors out, putting colors in, and taking colors out, and because I wanted something like really nice and spring and fun color, and we like we had all sorts of different variations. Right, that's the teal. That's the green. Then you got the red and we had the autumn last year. That's a really nice color as well. This is olives and oranges as well. So it's a sub to you. Have, have a look, have a go, whatever you make. Do please put a picture into the handmade group so we can um, we can all see it. What, what colors perhaps you put together. A beautiful looks like Russian spiral, which is also beyond me. Perhaps I'll try it another year or so no Kim you should be absolutely fine it's actually does look like Kumihime as well because you get exactly the same structure with sitting the beads in a circle motion like spiraling around in Kumihime as well so um, there is so many different ways you can get the same look in bracelets that um, which I'm going to put this on that like you know the, the possibilities are really endless thank you so much for today oh charlotte thank you so much for the stars i haven't even looked up at the comments um you know like how much i, I love crocheting so we just sit there and do it um are you going through the crystals or picking up the elastic that's when i was sewing them together so no when you're sewing them together you go just going through the loop under the, the elastic you don't go don't um go to the crystal bead at all 
Uh, apart from when you pick up the crystal beads the first time onto your strand, you don't go to the crystal beads at all in the project all the way through. Oh, thank you, Liz. This is saying amazing tutorial. Thank you. You're very, very welcome. I hope, like, you, I was a little bit anxious about and worried about this because I do know I hold the crochet hook differently how other people hold it, and I was like, oh boy, am I going to be how 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 am I going to be able to show them like really easily because it's so so easy. And I sit I sit there like watching TV and I could just go um, like crochet, 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 crochet. I do I don't even have to look at my crocheting so much so but I, I hope I was able to show it to you like easily and you understood but whatever way you crocheting or whatever way you hold the crochet hook you just do the same thing and you can go in rounds and rounds come on this thing you were concentrating so that no actually I was enjoying myself so hard because I this is really really right up my street so I would sit there and do I would do these all I would I would go and do this all day long. Now, what I said about hairband, so have I got a smaller one here? This, this is perhaps a little bit smaller, what I made ages ago. You can use these as a hairband. So if I want to put this in my hair, I would actually add a like a very thin like hairband to actually hold my hair and I just put this on the top of it as a decoration, but that would look really good as well. Let me actually, I'm going to put it in my hair for you to show you because they, they look really great and they are good for like, you know, children, grandchildren, nieces. I haven't got anything underneath it, but you can see the how well and how nicely that just holds my hair together. So that just the bracelet, there's nothing on there and it holds, I can't even see how does it look <laughs> for myself. But um, do let me know. I think it looks good. Um, just to have a bit of extra bit of sparkle in your hair. Something a little bit different. Oh, Lucy's saying very pretty. I believe you, Lucy. <laughs> I can't see. It wouldn't be nice to be have an eye on the back so we could see what's going on. But um, you can use them as um, in your hair as well. So that's it for me today. I will see you tomorrow and have a lovely day, everybody. Have a go at crocheting because it's really, really easy. If you do get stuck, send me a message and um, we can always do an extra little live or something that, um, you know, just let, let me know. And I'm always here to help. So everybody have a great day. The weather is not so nice here. So it's a perfect day to stay in and do some beading. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.